It's time for the 2013 Monterey Week Final. Here we are. I'm Dave Kinney, the publisher of Haggerty Price Guide. I'm Colin Comer. I'm Rob Sass, publisher of Haggerty Magazine. I'm Adam Martin, vice president of the Haggerty Institute. So let's run the numbers for 2013 Monterey Week. And our overall reported numbers are $301.9 million. Of 1,280 cars offered, 726 have been reported as sold. That's an overall sale-through rate of 57%. This is versus last year's 265 million, so 301.9 is a substantial increase. Breaking down a little further, RM's numbers, 125 million in two nights, 105 sold of 121 offered, that's 87%. Gooding? 112.7 million, uh, 113 uh, sold of 127 offered for 89 percent, and Bonhams has uh, 30.5 million, 76 of 90 sold, that's 84 uh, percent. Meekum, 27.2 uh, million dollars, 352 sold of 727 offered at 48 percent. And Russo and Steele did 6.5 million, 80 sold of 215 offered. That's 37% for 2013. Keep in mind these are unconfirmed numbers and there'll probably be some after sales that get added in just a little bit uh, when everybody reports these as final numbers. Uh, so the Nard Spider, the last one that sold publicly was just under $4 million for an alloy body, the, the Thomas Crown Right, car. A, a car that had uh, that actually had race history, although kind of an interesting race history. Um, I, I think the big story here is the one single family ownership on this car. Yeah, and out of the 10 cars, uh, to have a one family owned uh, Nard Spider. Uh, Nard Spider is a very exclusive car. The big boys of the Ferrari world they can get a, a 250 GTO a lot easier than they can get a Nerd Spider. Yeah. So when you need to talk about the GTO in your garage and your Nerd Spider, and one comes up for sale, mm -hmm. there, there's, there's, amazingly enough, there are more than a few buyers for a good Nerd Spider. And of course, you know what's going to happen. Uh, someone else who owns a Nerd Spider is going to wake up, you know, the next morning and say, "Holy smoke, 27 and a half million dollars! <laughs> That's more of an asset than I thought I had." So mm -hmm. another one will probably come on the market in the next year or two. That's yeah. just right. the way it works. But uh, you know, who knows if that'll achieve more or less than this one? Well, then, will the next owner uh, donate the proceeds to charity? Do you think? I don't think so. That was a pretty <laughs> neat move. It uh, was and great. That, it was, that great was all was. part of the yeah. auction theater. Yeah. The yeah. entire amount of money, the 27 and a half or the 25 million dollars. The two and a half million was mm -hmm. the commission on it. The twenty-five million dollars goes to some charities that the uh, Smith family chose, and uh, that's a pretty wildly cool thing to do. And the Smith family, I mean, their their comment I thought was great that rather than you know the money going to the family, it's it's mm -hmm. going to help thousands of families. Mm -hmm. And the very last time at twenty-five million dollars, if you're all done, thank you very much for your bids at twenty-five million dollars. So. I've got something unique to talk about. I mean, the 275 is a massive number, but I think we witnessed history with the 1928 Mercedes-Benz 680S Sautchek, last year's Pebble Beach Concord Elegance Best of Show winner, shows up on the auction block this year. I mean, I get goosebumps just talking about it. This car had presence last year when it rolled up on the podium. It was this sinister, chopped roof, so great rod. color yeah. hot rod. I mean, it was really interesting and a departure from what typically rolls up on that podium. And yeah. now we saw it roll up on the podium at the auction venue. It was special. Not what without a bit think? of controversy there, too, True. because you don't often see last year's best in show winner. Nope for sale the next year. Not at all. But a good example of what collectors tend to do with automobiles. Do you restore to show and then drive until a, a certain degree of road rash and then you re-restore it again? And for others, the thrill is sometimes just the restoration effort itself and then that debut yeah. and then move on to the next one. The one thing that, the one question that did answer, I think, is that a lot of a lot of the collectors that want a Pebble Beach Best in Show winner, they want to be the person who restores it. They want to be the person that brings it to the show yeah. and wins. Yeah. And the question's always been is once the car wins Pebble, once the car wins Villa Dust, is the car still desirable to a top-end collector? Yeah. Because they can't take it to Pebble again and win right. again. 
this answers the question. The car is still the car that was the best of show Pebble Beach winner, and it's the value is there from that win. So you don't have to be the person that brings the pretty girl to prom. Mm -hmm. You know, she's still the pretty girl next year. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yours is. yours is a good point though. It's not like you're going to threepeat. You're not going to start a dynasty. You're not going to win Pebble Beach again <laughs> the next year with the same car. No. For the third and the last time at seven million. Five hundred thousand dollars. Are you sure you've done it? I'll finish. So, congratulations. Seven million five hundred thousand dollars for the nine hundred and ten. The risk of, of uh, over Ferrariing things, I had the 1953 Ferrari 375 Millimilia. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting car, kind of the predecessor to the, the Testarossa. About well, mm -hmm. well, twice as rare. They built about 12 of the 375 Millimilias and, and in the 20s for Testarossas. 340 horsepower, a lot of power for a car mm -hmm. of that era. And this one, while not raced by, by a, a really well-known driver, mm -hmm. is raced by a fairly famous privateer. Uh, the heir to the Kimberly Clark, uh, the Kleenex. Exactly portion. right. Yeah, with with a couple of unique um, features of this particular 375. The uh, you already mentioned it, the color Kimberly, right? Mm -hmm. A custom mixture paint. Yep. As well as those distinctive scallops, or do they call it the pontoon? Well, it's kind of the predecessor of the pontoon yeah. fender design on the Testarossa. But yeah. I mean, you could see, you know, that's where Ferrari was going. The evolution. Yeah. What do you think? Is it a love it or hate it design? At practice on the 375? I didn't find the car as pretty as a, as a mm -hmm. Testarossa or a lot of other competition Ferraris, some of which were for sale here this weekend, but mm -hmm. a strong result at a little over $9 million. For a strong car, great race motor, a wonderful exhaust note, I think the new owner is going to love driving that car and being proud to showcase it wherever it may show. Welcome anywhere, and as we all know, it's a usability-driven marketplace right now. Selling for eight million point four seven, a big number, almost eight and a half million dollars. Obviously, nineteen ninety seven McLaren. Now this is a car that just two years ago was, you know, kind of breaching the two million dollar mark. But we've been following these cars very, very closely with uh, the Hagerty valuation tools, uh, taking a look at these cars, and we have a lot of people are saying this is the two fifty GTO of the next generation. Um, it's an interesting car. McLaren is a company that uh, you know has has fought their way back and become a, a real leader in uh, you know in the exotic car market. It looks like they're very much here to stay. Uh, they're building new product and using kind of the you know the the F1 heritage here as uh, you know kind of a backdrop. Um, these cars are you know are are really really special cars and you know eight and a half million dollars is big money for a car that was built in all of our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's practically a certified pre-owned used car, <laughs> 16 years old. <laughs> it's pretty amazing that we're talking about it already as, as a certified blue chipper and the next 250 GTO. But the thing mm -hmm. I love about these cars is they are serious, serious cars. Posers did not buy these cars. No. Came only with conventional three-pedal manual transmissions. I'm pretty sure Kanye West doesn't own one. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're probably right. This is not a lifestyles of the rich and famous. This no. is this is a car about serious driving and serious driving pleasure. So your car sucked. All right. A new world record for McLaren F1 at auction. Congratulations. Great car. Great price. And really lots of surprises. We're going to be reading about them. You know, we, we witnessed a lot of them. Uh, we're going to be talking about them. You know, even at the low end of the market and the big end of the market, there's always great cars here in Monterey. Adam? To learn more trying. about your collector vehicle, go to Haggerty.com slash valuation tools to look up your price guide report. It's been a great week here in Monterey. We look forward to seeing you next year. <laughs>